What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 55. We have Holly Holm going against Ketlin Vieira. And we are back for another betting breakdown video this week, breaking down an 11 fight card headlined by Holly Holm, Ketlin Vieira. And it's another card kind of like last week where I'm going to be, you know, pretty light on. I mean, somebody, somebody last week got mad at me for passing on all these fights, but I mean, you know, you can't force me to go out there and, and bet Elise Reed, Sam Hughes. I don't want to do that. I don't want to bet on Felipe Caloris, Chase Hooper. I mean, there's you know, sometimes it's, it's it's better to pass than bet on some of these fights. So I'm keeping it light this week. It worked out last week, got a winning night, hoping to get a winning night here and then take a week off. And then we have 10 straight weeks of UFC. It's been a phenomenal May, and I don't want to throw it all away betting on Elise Reed and Sam Hughes. So um, five bets for me. Again, not a, not a big card, not a ton of spots stick out, a really sketchy card. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So before we get started, as always, if you guys can leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, that'd be much appreciated as always. And then if you do want a further more in-depth breakdown on why I like which fighter, on why I'm betting what, I did post a full card breakdown and prediction video earlier in the week. I went live on the MMA Engine YouTube channel for my final thoughts, um, talking some weigh-ins, betting, draftings, all the good stuff. And then me, Eric, Wheezy, and NarcoCop are going live one hour prior to when the prelims start um, as well. So check that out. Make sure you are subscribed so not miss out on all the content. But I say we get right into it. And we'll start the first fight of the night. We have Elise Reed going against Sam Hughes, and yeah, I do like Reed here. I just can't get the minus 150. I mean, Sam Hughes is, could make this very close, especially if he comes in here with a good game plan. But, you know, Elise Reed, she's going to be the better striker. You know, I liked what I saw in her last fight in terms of the striking, in terms of the takedown defense improvements, the, the ground game improvements as well. She got taken down a couple times by McKenna. She was able to pop back up at times. Um, and Sam Hughes, her wrestling is not really translated, and I think she's going to get the fight down to the mat to win this fight because on the feet, Sam Hughes is very... Very, very hittable. Um, I say Reed wins. I say she wins by decision, but you can, you cannot. I'm not betting on this fight. There's no way. I, I'm passing on the first fight of the night, um, but I, I will pick Reed to win. I'll take her to win by decision. Uh, next, we have Felipe Kalorish going against Shea Super. I'm actually picking the dog here in Hooper. There's no way I'm betting this fight as well, um, but I just don't understand this line of, of minus 180. People just want to now fade Chase Hooper, and I, I get it. I want to fade Chase Super just as much as anybody, but do we really want to go out there and lay minus 180 on Felipe Calores, who I'm not even sure what he's good at? Uh, he's coming up a weight class. He's going to be very undersized. He's going to be the older fighter as well. You know, both guys, their striking's not good. Their takedowns aren't good. Their takedown defense isn't good. Both guys are grapplers, and Chase Super probably even is the better grappler. Um, line makes no sense. Um, I'll fade Hooper in the future, but there's no way, no way I'm laying minus 180 on Felipe Calores. With that, with that said, I'm, there's no way I'm betting this fight. So another fight where I'm passing, I know people don't like to hear, you know, I'm passing, but um, there's just no way I can bet on this fight. So give me a, give me Chase Super for the win. If anything, I would take a look at the fight goes to decision, you know, near even money. I think that's a solid spot to look. Neither guy's ever been finished, but as far as, you know, betting aside here, there's no way. Uh, next we have Jonathan Martinez going against Vince Morales. Yeah, I like Jonathan Martinez here. He's one of more, my confident, my more confident picks on the entire card. Uh, the line kind of got away from me, though. I have five bets, like I said. I bet all of them on Monday and haven't bet anything since. Nothing's really sticking out, um, and the line kind of got away. So I think it was like minus 190 earlier in the week. I, I didn't hate that. Now minus 200. It's definitely getting up there in a fight that it could play out close, but stylistically, I do like this spot for Martinez. You know, very good kicks, um, leg kicks, body kicks, head kicks. I think the leg kicks especially are going to give Morales a lot of problems here. I guess the one concern I'd have, especially when you're laying minus 220 on Martinez, is going to be the chin. Um, he's been hurt a ton, a lot more than you'd really like to see, and Morales does hit pretty hard. But, you know, if this does go decision, which I do think it does, um, I think Martinez is able to outpoint Morales throughout the duration of the, of the fight. So I like Martinez. I like Martinez by decision more than likely. I would not completely roll it a knockout. And then also, if you want to improve the minus 220, I know the DraftKings and Fan will do that double chance. I think I saw the double chance for Martinez, KO or decision. Um, was like minus 195, just to improve that minus 220 a little bit. But yeah, give me Martinez. Uh, no bet on this fight. All right, next, um, this is where I get my action started. Three bets in a row here. So we have the first one, Omar Morales going against Erlis Medich. Um... I got in on the under 2.5 pretty early here, minus 110, one unit on it. 
And the reason being is we have uh, Eros Medic, eight fights. He's never seen the decision. He's never been over two and a half rounds. He's never been to the third round. He's never even been over one and a half rounds. And he's only been to that second round twice in his entire career. Um, Medic is, you know, killer be killer fighter. We saw in his last fight against Jalen Turner, he finally met some resistance and he did not look great. Um, he looked kind of tired at the end of the first round and Jalen Turner broke him a little bit. I think there's paths to victory for both guys to finish here. I think Medic is very live for an early finish. This guy's explosive. Um, offensively, he's very, very good. Um, and then Morales, I think he's live for, you know, to either take over as the fight goes on and eventually finish um, Medic or BJJ Black Belt, get the fight down to the mat. Medic has little to no takedown defense and submit this guy. So um, instead of, you know, picking a side or betting a side, I think the fight doesn't go is solid. I think the under two and a half is solid. I think the fight won't start round three is all solid ways to play this fight. I think this fight does finish within the, within the first two rounds there. But yeah, give me a uh, Morales for the win, but you know, Medich is very live early on. Next, we have the People's Main Event, Gileton Almeida going against Parker Porter. And yeah, I have a bet on here as well. I have the under one and a half rounds, minus 125, one unit on it. The reason being is Gileton Almeida, 15 wins, all 15 of them coming under one and a half rounds. The one fight that did go over one and a half, he actually lost, and he lost it by decision. If you like the Parker Porter side, which a shocking amount of people do, um, Parker Porter by decision is plus 1,200. I think that's how he wins. Parker Porter, little to no power, especially for a heavyweight. Um, and then, like I said, Almeida has lost his only fight that went over one and a half rounds, and it was by decision. So if you like Porter, Porter by decision, but I like Almeida. I think Almeida takes him down in the first round and just finishes him early on. Um, if this does go over one and a half rounds, if this does get into the second, maybe a live bet look. Um, but, you know, Almeida's going to take him down and finish him. Whether it's ground and pound, uh, submission, I think Almeida gets him out of there in the very first round. But instead of laying the minus 600 on him, which I don't really agree with, uh, why not bet the under one and a half rounds, minus 125? Um, I don't hate that look as well. So give me Almeida to win. Almeida probably in the first round, but the under one and a half is the way I look. It also covers maybe a random Parker Porter early knockout, which I don't think is all that likely, but yeah, Almeida should finish this guy early. And by the way, if you guys did not see the weigh-ins, go check out the weigh-ins because uh, Almeida <laughs> Mid was towering over Parker Porter, who's supposed to be the heavyweight. Almeida supposed to be the light heavyweight, but Almeida looked like two weight classes bigger than him. Uh, next, we have Joseph Holmes going against Alan Imadovsky. This fight is the definition of violence. Both guys... 100% finish rate. Both guys have never won a decision. Um, and stylistically, I think both these guys have a path to, uh, to finish this fight. And Madovsky is a guy that wants to go in there and stand and bang until one man falls. We saw in the John Phillips fight where he did just that and then um, got finished within the first 60 seconds. And he's going to have an opportunity to go out here and knock out Joseph Holmes very early, who I do not rate all that highly. And it's kind of nuts to me that he's minus 200. But um, I do think Joseph Holmes has more paths to victory here. I think on the feed, he's going to be long, rangy, big reach advantage. Um, he has power in his own right. I think he can have success on the feed if he does get knocked out. But most especially, you know, getting this fight down to the mat for Joseph Holmes. BJJ Brown belt, Amadovsky, little to no ground game from what I've seen. So I think it's uh, Joseph Holmes, early sub, could knock him out as well. Or Amadovsky, probably a knockout early on. So I like violence here. I have 1.5 units on the fight, doesn't go to decision, minus 230, just played it straight there. The reason I didn't go heavier is this is a very low-level fight, very, very low-level fight. Um, so I don't want to be too exposed, but I think the fight doesn't go to decision um, in this, in this, on this card as one of my more favorite bets, the under 2.5. I saw the fight won't start round 3 on Fanduel, like minus 136. I think those are all good ways to play it, and I think somebody gets finished here and probably even first round. Uh, next, we have Jung Young Park going against Eric Anders. Yeah, I like Park here, um, but I'm not really excited about the minus 205. I feel like this could be a much closer fight than the line does indicate. But, yeah, going back and watching Park, I was actually really impressed with the strike. And this guy's striking is very good, good combinations. And most importantly, he throws a ton of output. Whereas Anders, you know, kind of a one shot at a time, you know, big power guy. But I think the minute winner is going to be Jung Young Park. For Eric Anders to win this fight, he's going to have to clinch up with Park. And he's going to have to get him down to the mat consistently. And he's going to have to do that for three rounds, which I, which I don't really see happening. But I will say the pass there, just as Anders have the cardio to push a wrestling heavy pace and do that for three rounds, I'm not so sure. But yeah, Park does have a 47% takedown defense. I think this does go to decision. I think, think it is competitive, but I do lean towards Park because I do think it's going to primarily play out in the feet. And at that point, I do like the volume a ton of Jung Young Park. So a uh, minus 205, no thank you. Um, the fight goes to decision. I don't think is the worst look in the world. The over two and a half, I don't think is the worst look in the world because both these guys are extremely tough and extremely durable. But give me Park by decision. 
Um, next, we have the other people's main event. Uh, we have Tabitha Ricci going against Pauliana Viana. And I do have a bet here. I have one unit on Tabitha Ricci, minus 115. Do I feel great about it? No, I do not. Um, again, another pretty low-level fight, but I do think that stylistically Tabitha Ricci should be the minute winner here because Viana, she just doesn't win minutes. Viana in her wins, all of them come by finish, and that's because she's willing to you know, pull guard. You know, She has no takedown defense, 40%. Her striking's not great. And Tabitha Ricci, if she goes for takedowns, which she is, you know, she's going to get them with little to no resistance here. Uh, Tabitha Ricci is a BJJ black belt. Tabitha Ricci is a judo black belt as well. I think Tabitha Ricci is going to be the one getting on top. Um, you know, if Viana wins, it's, it's probably inside the distance. It's probably by sub if you like Viana. Submission plus 415 is not the worst look in the world. Um, but I just find it hard to believe that she's going to submit a BJJ black belt and Ricci off her back. I mean, you, if you do it against Emily Whitmire, who's been submitted like six times at this point. You know, Mallory Martin, who's been submitted like twice. Um, but is she going to do that to a BJJ black belt in Ricci? I'm not so, so sure. So, um, yeah, do I love this spot? No, I do not. But I don't have a ton of stuff on this card. One unit, Tabitha Ricci, minus 115. It beat a little lineman, but it looks like the line's coming back a little bit. If you do like Ricci, I'd wait um, until closer to fight time. And if you do like Vion, I'd probably hop on now. I think this line's going to keep on closing. But uh, yeah, give me Ricci to win and Ricci to win by decision. Next, we have Chidi and Jaquan going against Dusko Todorovic. Um, yeah, so I guess the only thing that really sticks out is going to be that Chidi knockout. Uh, ben Online opened it up at like plus 155. I'm not sure why I didn't take a shot there, but yeah, this line is getting crazy. Like, I'm not a big fan of Dusko. Uh, I'm not a big fan of his striking defense. He's very hittable. His hands are down low, chin up in the air, backing up. Um, I don't like his striking defense, but my goodness, I mean, Chidi, like minus 230. I saw him like minus 260 on one book. I'm just not entirely convinced because you go back and you watch the tape on Chidi from just a couple years ago, and there's a ton of red flags. He's getting taken down easily. His ground game does not look good. He's quitting in fights. He's gassing out. There's a lot of things that I don't like from uh, the Chidi tape. Do I think he he wins this fight? Yeah, but I saw him at minus 180 like on Sunday, and I'm like... I don't know. At the end of the day, he's been finished in six of seven losses. You know, Dusko's much younger. Dusko could be making improvements. Um, I don't really want to lay minus 180 on this guy. Now he's minus 260. So um, it's a pass for me. I'll say Cheaty knocks him out. And if anything, it would be a take. I would be taking a look at that Cheaty by knockout. But um, what happens if Dusko takes him down? What happens if Dusko gets on top? Um, I don't know. What happens if the fight gets extended? I don't know. So a fight that, yeah, the line just gotten way out of hand, in my opinion, but I do think Chidi still wins, and I'll pick him to win by first-round knockout. Next, we have Michelle Pereira going against Santiago Pontanibio. Um, Yeah, a lot of people on the Pereira side. I'm actually on the Ponzi side with not a ton of confidence, but uh, money's just pouring in on Pereira here. I think it's going to be a very close fight. What I liked in the tape from Pontanibio was going to be the pressure, especially in that Baeza fight. Um, as soon as the fight started, he pressured. And if he does that here, I think he's going to have some success. So we are in the smaller cage. Prayer is a guy that kind of wants to be on the outside. Um, but I don't, I don't think Ponzinibbio is going to give him much room here. I think he's going to pressure early and often. And we have seen Pereira slow down in pretty much every fight that gets extended. This guy's slowing down. I think Ponzi's going to pressure. I think Ponzi's going to get Pereira tired. And I think Ponzi's going to take over as the fight goes on. But, you know, it's going to be a very close fight. You know, we have the more flashy strikes from Michelle Pereira. Um, and then we have Ponzi Nibby, who's his hands are very good. Combinations are very good. Lots of volume as well. And again, that pressure. Um, I like Ponzi here. Just uh, a fight that I'm not going to bet unless like the line just it keeps getting wider. Maybe I'll take a shot on Ponzi. But as of now, I'm passing. But yeah, Ponzi by decision, plus 215. I don't think that's the worst look in the world. Pereira is extremely durable. Only been knocked out once. And even that knockout was kind of like... Um, yeah, it, it could have it could have kept going on, I thought. So, yeah, give me Ponzi. Ponzi by decision. Kind of tempted there, but I think I'm just going to sit back and watch this one. And then the main event, we have Holly Holm going against Ketlin Vieira. So I broke down this fight on Monday with Uncle Wheezy, and we broke it down, and, you know, I liked everything. Everything for Holly Holm in the spot. The one thing I don't like is the fact that she's 40 years old. She's taken, a, like, over a year layoff at this point. Um, that's the one thing I didn't like, but... If Holly Holm comes here and looks anything, like anything, like she did in the Aldana fight, like she's going to beat Ketlin Vieira. Um, this is a five-round fight that most definitely favors Holm. Holm's going to have the much better cardio. It's not even close. 
I'm home. Very good takedown defense and home when she's losing. She's losing to the best of the best. You know, losses to Amanda Nunez, Cyborg, GDR, you know, fighters like that. Misha Tate back in the day. When she's losing, she's losing to very good fighters. She's losing to champions. And I just don't know if Vieira is anywhere near that level, honestly. Just not impressed with Vieira. You know, kind of low volume on the feet. She's getting outlanded in terms of the significant strikes per minute. Um, I guess Vieira could go for takedowns. I think that's her game plan to go for takedowns. But is she going to be able to take down Holly Holm for 25 minutes? I don't think so. We've seen Vieira slow down bad in three-round fights. If she does come in here and try to wrestle Holly Holm, and Holm makes her work, like what's her gas tank going to look like in that third, fourth, and fifth round? Probably not great. So I like Holly Holm here. Um, I put a bet on her, minus 225, 1.5 units. It'd be a bigger bet, but 40 years old scares me. The layoff scares me, but everything else I like. So 1.5 units on Holly Holm. Do I love it? No, not really, but I think she should win. She should win here. As long as she does not come back looking like old and washed, she should win this fight. I think Holly Holm is, is a solid partly piece, but I put a little bit on it um, on the money line there, and it looks like it went to like minus 250, but it looks like it's coming back now. So, yep, give me Holly Holm there, but uh, we'll see what happens. And I wouldn't really mess around with the props because Vieira... We did see her get knocked out in the first round by Aldana, and then Vieira also does slow down as the fight goes on. So maybe like a home, like four or five decision would be something to look at, but I think home does get this one done. So quick recap of the bets. Again, guys, going, going light. I know people don't like it, but it worked out very good last week. Um, I hope it works out this week. Just not a card I want to be overly exposed to at all. That's a very sketchy card. But yeah, 1.5 units on Holy Home, minus 225. And then Alan Madovsky, Joseph Holmes, 1.5 units, minus 230. Fight doesn't go to decision. My two biggest bets of the card. And then one unit bets on Tabitha Ricci, the under 2.5 uh, for Morales Medic, and then the under 1.5 for Jalton Almeida and Parker Porter. Five bets, not a ton of action, but um, just not a big fan of this card from a betting perspective. But it should be fun. And yeah, guys, that is about it. Make sure you guys leave a like if you enjoy the content. As always, subscribe to the channel. It is much, much appreciated. And uh, we'll talk to you guys very soon. Week off. Um, I'm going to take that week off and start getting into these cards for June. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun summer. Ten, ten fight cards in a row um, this summer. So that should be awesome. So that's about it, guys. Best of luck, and we'll talk to you very soon.